and welcome back to the channel for another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the year four expectations, what your child will need to learn when they go into year four. Um, this is a series of videos I'm doing about each year group. This is the most comprehensive video I've done so far, um, just because there's as the, as the children move through the different year groups, there becomes more and more content that needs to be covered. Um, but this is going to be a really useful video. There's going to be lots in here and it hopefully will help help you as parents or teachers um, see the key things that come out of year four. Um, so let's get into the video. And um, before I start, though, please, can I just say that a lot of people um, watch the videos but are not yet subscribed. Um, I try to update the channel as often as possible. Um, so please do subscribe to the channel if you um, want more videos about primary education. So let's get into it. So I'm going to start with reading, um, as I have done with all these other videos. Now, when it comes to year four, we're really expecting the children to be able to read fluently. Now, if your child can't do that, either they've come to the country, they're new to English, or maybe they have a special educational need, then go back to the other previous year group videos to see what I've said in there about reading. But by year four, the children should be able to read quite fluently. Um, and look down here, it says in the curriculum, that at this stage teaching comprehension should be taking precedence over teaching word reading directly so in their lessons in school they'll be looking more at comprehension rather than having a focus too much on actually breaking down words and reading words and and using phonics um, but what they do work on still in year four is fluency and i just want to share this with you uh, it's a good teaching tool if you're a teacher but also as a parent um, we need to work on the children's fluency, so not just about um, being able to read words they don't know, but when they are reading, how smooth and how much flow can you can you hear in their reading? So I do a bronze, silver, gold scale in my reading lessons, and the children essentially self-assess and they give themselves a score, or they give their partners a score. But um, it break, gets broken down like this. Um, if they get a bronze, it's because they read most words correctly. Uh, without sounding them out and they stop when they see a full stop. So making sure when they see punctuation that they're pausing. However, if they go one better than that, you know, they're reading most words correctly again. This time though, they're uh, pausing when they see a full stop and a shorter pause when they see a comma. So they're making more note of that punctuation and their reading is flowing so they can hear it flows. It's not so, sometimes uh, children can read and it sounds a bit robotic. That's because there's not that flow there. They're having to think too much about the words. Um, but that would be a silver. And then they can give themselves a gold if they've read most words correctly. They've stopped when they see a full stop and a comma. Their reading is flowing, but then they're also reading with expression and changing their voice maybe when a character is speaking as well. So they've got that expression in their reading. So that would be a gold. So it's just a nice way of the children giving themselves some own, some feedback. And you could... Use that with your children if you wanted to as well. So they are going to do a little bit of work on fluency in year four, but the main focus is on comprehension. Uh, just a quick word then on this idea of uh, reading with expression. Uh, they brought out a new term in the curriculum that keeps, you get these terms in education that, that uh, are, they're not trending, but they go around. And this new one is prosody. Now prosody is the art of both oral and silent reading. And, um, it's this idea that children are able to read with expression, intonation and pace of the text, which help them to derive meaning. So what that means is um, when they're reading a text, they can tell from um, the way the text is going, like which part should be read with expression, should be read with excitement or worry um, or a sense of nervousness. OK, and they only get this from hearing adults read. So when you read to a child, you're really showing them how this prosody helps the meaning of the text because you're changing your voice if a character is worried or you're changing a your voice um, if a character is excited or if it's lots of short sentences, you know, you're quickening up the pace of the reading to show the building up of suspense and tension. So all of this is called prosody and, and it's supposed to um, show and help the children get meaning from the text because if they're not changing their pace or their tone or their intonation, um, throughout when they're reading, then it doesn't really show that they understand the different parts of the text they're reading. So just something to be aware of, because at this point in year four, you should really be seeing that the children, you know, when they're reading out loud to you, they can, you know, see what which bits of the reading should be read in a certain way. So that's prosody, just something to bear in mind. 
So going on to the comprehension then, um, and very similar to year three, um, they're going to use a read a range of, of different texts, poetry, plays, non-fictions. They must have this really wide reading diet and also books that are read in structured in different ways. So not always a beginning, middle and end. Sometimes stories, you know, they play around with the order of a story. So really giving them a varied idea of what books can be like. Um, and again, it's just about reading a wide range of books, you know, um, identifying themes. So are there any themes in the book? You know, is it about um, war or um, is it about friendship? OK, so can they identify themes in books as well? This comes up and then digging further into the comprehension here, we've got, um, you know, this idea again of prosody, changing their tone and intonation when they're reading. Um, discussing and recognizing words that are new to them, explain the weird meaning of words in context, asking questions about the book, drawing inferences, um, predicting, uh, identifying language, structure and presentation, how they contribute to the meaning, and of course, retrieval. So all of this links again to something I talked about in the year three video. At this point in year four, you're in the key stage two curriculum. So you really should be thinking about these different types of questions. And um, in school, we call them the content domains. Some child friendly terms could be things like Rex Retriever or, um, you know, different ways of making them sound more child friendly. But why do they need to learn about these? And they learn about them in their reading lessons. It's because in the year six SATs that they're working towards, they're assessed on their ability to answer questions based on these content domains. And you can see here um, of the content domains, the percentage of uh, questions that were asked in the last SATS paper. So um, word meaning, finding words in context, which is 2A. These often sound like find and copy a word that means. That was 18% of the test was on those types of questions. Retrieval, so who, what, where, when questions. Um, being able to find those details in the text, that was 32% of questions was on this. And making inference was a whopping 46%. So nearly half of the year six SATS papers are this um, making inferences, being able to say how characters feel, why they feel this way, um, being able to understand what characters mean when they say things in the text, or what kind of characters they are, really giving them lots of questions around this infer idea of inference is going to really help them. So yeah, the reading lessons in year four focus on these content domains, but more specifically, they focus on these three because those, those three are the most important. Prediction is important and summarizing also comes up, but you can see here where you want to focus. Okay, so what books are good to read in year four? Well, here are some books that I've done in school, some ones I've read personally, and some ones I've done more recently to engage some children who are maybe not the, uh, the most interested in reading. So um, the Philip Pullman books are great. We do this one in school, The Firework Maker's Daughter. But I actually prefer his series on his dark materials, which is here, Northern Lights, um, is a great book. I read this when I was a kid, really exciting, really engaging. And it comes as a series of three, uh, including The Subtle Knife and then The Amber Spyglass. And it was recently made into a TV program as well. So great books, great stories. Obviously, you can start introducing them to the Harry Potter series. Um, um, Vajak Poor is a book we read in school. The Iron Man, another good book. Boys tend to like this one. And then really thinking about boys more specifically because um, really trying to engage boys now at this age is quite tricky. You want to look at a range of different things. So you've got the Diary of the Wimpy Kid books, which boys love. Um, and then comic books. You know, I read these Tintin books when I was in school and there's nothing wrong with them engaging in those. They, they You just want them to engage in reading and find pleasure in it. Uh, the Asterix ones are very similar to those tinted books. And then in my school at the moment, the kids are really enjoying these Dragon Ball Z Japanese comics. Um, again, you know, I've had read, kids read these all day, but that's fine. You know, I, I'm happy to see them get pleasure from reading. So a varied diet of reading, but here are some ideas of how you can get the children engaged. And also don't forget to read with your own child at home as well. You know, it doesn't always have to be them. You can read to them as well. Remember practicing that idea of prosody. OK, so moving on to writing and the difficulty with year three or four writing is because it is very similar to year three um, in in regards to the curriculum. 
Um, but what you want to see is a more accurate piece of writing. So the way that they're applying these things. So once again, in year four, we get this idea of um, plural possession in spelling. You can see it here. So that's using apostrophe S for things that belong to people, which they would have learned in year two, but also this idea of plural possession. When something belongs to a group of people, here we have my parents' house, where the apostrophe comes after the S because it belongs to a group. And then um, year three and four, also we have the common exception words. So, you know, pause the video here, make a note of them, but they can be easily found online. This is a new list of words that children would need to know how to spell at the end of year three and four. So they will have learned these in year three, but also in year four, they should be able to spell these towards the end of the year. I would just take five or 10 words a week and practice them and learn them, which is what they'll be doing in school anyway. Um, but yeah, they're the year three, four spelling words that they'll need to know. And finally, handwriting. Again, it's this idea of them starting to join more consistently and we get this idea of ascenders and descenders looking like ascenders and descenders. So what that means is ascenders are letters that should be higher, taller, like this B here. It should look taller than the rest of the letters. And then descenders are the ones that you have that go beneath the line, descend beneath the line. The ones like Y, G, okay? So you should be able to see a difference between the small case letters and the ascenders and descenders. And they should be trying to form and join those correctly. Um, so you should see more joined handwriting in year four. So what are we looking for specifically in their writing? So um, in year four, we should see children being able to um, organize their writing to paragraphs. That's more independently rather than the teacher showing them what should be in there. They can decide themselves what they want to have in each paragraph and they can organize that correctly. Uh, creating settings, characters and plots in their narratives and stories, using headings and subheadings proofreading for spelling and punctuation errors. And it's really a more independence now when they're looking for those errors. Once they've done a piece of writing, can they find their own mistakes? And um, specifically with grammar, and again, it's very similar to year three. Okay, so you've got the use of the present perfect form of the tense, tense, which I'll talk about in a minute, using conjunctions, adverbs, and prepositions. So that's, you know, those subordinating, coordinating conjunctions, adverbs, fronted adverbials, and then down here, using a comma with a front adverbial. So in year three, they were first introduced to this, but in year four, you should see a real variation of these front adverbials, and the children should now, in year four, be accurately using a comma afterwards, whereas in year three, they may have made a few mistakes there. Possession for apostrophes and plural possession I've talked about. And then this idea of using and punctuating direct speech. I'm going to go into more detail about this because it has to be more accurate when you get into year four. So let's start with speech. So um, speech and how we use it. Um, it isn't just about using the speech marks. There are certain things that children have to be able to do when using speech in their writing. So I'm going to go through these because it's important now in year four that they can do this accurately. So they use the speech marks separate, separate words spoken. So that's obvious. Anything that's being spoken should have those speech marks around it. It can be single or double speech marks, but it has to be consistent. So if you're using double, use double all the time, okay? Punctuation. So there should be, um, every time you start a new line of speech, there should be a capital letter, okay? And the punctuation that you use in the speech has to go inside the speech marks. So it's very important here. You can see it's coming inside the speech marks. Um, capital letters, okay? Like I said, they should start the speech with capitals. However, there should be no capitals on the reporting clauses. Now the reporting clauses come after the speech. Um, there should be a new line for every new speaker uh, and reporting clause um, have a comma um, to go, yeah. So use a comma after reporting clause that introduces the speech. So if we look here, um, you're a wizard, Harry. Okay, you've got your speech marks, then you've got the capital letter, sorry, the exclamation mark inside the speech. Then you've got your reporting clause with the person who said it, but we've got no capital, even though there's an exclamation mark there. Boomed Hagrid. I'm a what? Question Harry. So a new speaker, new line. You've got your punctuation inside the speech marks, but then you've got, again, no capital letter. You're a wizard and a darn good one. Okay, and again, this is Hagrid speaking, so we need a new speaker, new line. 
no capital letter state your reporting clause. OK, so here you can see that that speech has been written correctly. And those are the things that they should be doing. So in year four, you should see them use this more accurately. Quick word on front adverbials, then I talked about this in the year three video. But um, yeah, you need to be making sure that once the children use them, there's a comma after each of those front adverbials. And they tell us how something happened, where or when. And they're essentially sentence starters. They go at the beginning of the children's sentences. Present perfect tense. So just a quick word on this. I talked about this in the year three video. But again, it's something that children need to learn in year four because, you know, they might not cover it again until they get to year six. And they and this is the time to learn it. OK, so to be introduced to it and to know it. Um, this is for a tense when you have something that's going on in the past, but it's still taking place. So you do have these ED words, which suggest that it was in the past tense. But present perfect, you see the use of the have and has words. OK, and that's a big clue that it's written in the present perfect. So I have finished my homework. OK, um, this is something you were doing in the past and you're now telling them telling somebody that it's done. So it may be still finishing it off. She has traveled to many different countries. And uh, this is saying that she has traveled to many countries in the past, but she may travel to countries in the future and in the present also. So things that have taken place in the past, but maybe will still take place later on. OK, so that's the present perfect tense and the children should at least be able to identify it. OK. So let's have a look at some year four writing then. And so you get an idea of what this looks like when the children's doing a piece of writing, because it's OK me telling you these things, but you need to see this and, and see how does it compare to your own child's writing. So let's have a look at it. So we've got, um, first of all, before the rats appeared, we've got there a front adverbial. Yeah. And it says here before the rats appeared and you've got your comma there afterwards. Um, Hamelin was a beautiful and sparkling river which which flowed gently. You've got use of adverb there. The birds singing in the light blue skies above. Well, you've got lovely um, expanded noun phrase here, which I enjoy. You've got a relative pronoun. I enjoyed the delicious smell of the mouth-watering toast. I was really proud with my children and proud of my town. I was contented for my job and my children also when work were contented. So you can see they've they've made their own corrections here, which I talked about that editing. Me and my husband, after doing work baking bread, we had a nice calm time lying in. The swirling sparkling river was nice to paddle in. So really lovely description here. The small happy tiny schools, you got commas to list as well, was where children could have fun there. The mighty mountain was beautiful to look at the view. So there's an issue with word order here. OK, I wouldn't say it was the most um, uh, strongest piece, but you can see some of the things that we've talked about appearing in that curriculum. OK, the front adverbials, the commas, the nice expanded noun phrases, uh, the description um, and the adverbs. OK, let's look at another piece. So this one that we have definitely we can see that joined handwriting. And the difference between the tall letters and the, the ascenders and the descenders. This is also uh, looks like a we've got a title here. So we've got a heading with a title underlined. The polar bears of the north uh, north tell a story about a bear and a man. Edgar was an ordinary strong bear who lived in the icy north. So you've got this relative pronoun here. This use of who to describe the character. She lived with her mother before she was cruelly um, poached on a on one brutal full moon during that night, during the same night. So there should actually be a comma there, but that's the front adverbial. Edgar was captured by evil warriors and wrapped in shiny chains. So you got um, an adverb here. Yeah. Um, Evilly, the warriors, so that's kind that's an adverb spelled incorrectly, I think, but then you have the adverb there. The warriors gave some gave uh, warriors soon gave her to a young boy, so got a use of a pronoun there, young boy, whom was called Auden. I am going to sell you to the rich king, exclaimed the boy. See, there you got your speech marks, you got your 66. I am going to sell you to the rich king, is the speech 
the exclamation mark inside the speech marks, and then your reporting clause, no capital letter, exclaim the boy. So accurate, accurately written speech, and that's what you're looking for in year four writing. Okay, and finally, let's look at this piece. Um, again, you can see they are joining their letters, not as um, consistent as the other piece, but you can see there's definitely joins there. He searched, he scanned, he stared. That's quite a nice start of a sentence, okay, that commas. Archie knew he wanted a scuffle, luffle, Sunday, mermaid and bubblegum flavoured um, something lolly, okay. He licked his lips with amazement as he glared at the lolly. Lovely use of the word verb there, not looked, glared. Archie felt hyper and enthusiastic, so we've got some adjectives there. What are you waiting for? Come and try it. So you've got your punctuation inside the speech marks. And again, exclaim the kind shopkeeper, your reporting clause with a small E. He smiled happily. His smile was as shiny as beautiful blue sapphires. Archie liked the lolly. It was unbelievable. Got a nice short sentence there. So a, a variety of long and short sentences. It was fantastic. He wolfed it, but it never got smaller. So we've got coordinating conjunction there. He felt amazed on how tasty it was. So here you can see them trying to put across this idea of excitement by using both long and short sentences. And that's where you should see in year four, this idea of conscious control, which is the children really developing their own style of writing and using different techniques for their own choice, which they're going to need to do and develop more as they move through year five and six. Okay, so let's move on to year four maths now. And there's quite a bit that comes up in year four maths. Like I said, it's going to be a comprehensive video, but all useful, all good things to know. So the first thing to know is that by this point, they should know their times tables all the way up to 12. And you can hear it say six, seven, nine, and they also be able to count in 25s and thousands. Um, year four is about multiplication tables, knowing these, and they'll be practicing them a lot in year four because they've got a test at the end of year four. It's a multiplication test where they're tested on their times tables. So they do need to know these up to 12 now. Um, but, you know, if they don't know them and they're at the beginning of year four, don't worry. Really get practicing those. The times table test comes about in June. Um, so it'll be June when they do that test. Recognize um, thousands, so now they've got four digit numbers, so hundreds, tens, ones, and thousands. Order and compare numbers to a thousand, and now this idea of rounding comes in. Now, it wasn't in the year three curriculum, but it is in the year four curriculum, and it's important now that they learn how to round a number. So they'll often learn this rounding rhyme. When the number is four or less, let it rest. Five or more, raise the score. So any numbers that are four or less, you would round down. And any numbers that are five or more, you would round up. And you can see this on this number line here. Take the number 65. If we're rounding to the nearest 10, we look at the number before. So we look at this five here. Now, because it's a five, five or more raise the score. We would round 65 up to 70. But if the number was 64, any number that's five or less, you round down. So we would round it down to 60. So they're going to need to learn how to round the nearest 10 and 100 in year four. This idea of Roman numerals comes up again up to 100. Don't panic too much about Roman numerals. It's not a big thing in the curriculum. But the idea of them understanding numbers up to 1,000 is very important. Number, um, so addition of subtraction, it's all about them being able to solve and add and subtract four-digit numbers now. So this is an example of adding four-digit numbers, but the same for subtraction. Multiplication and division, I've talked about already, being able to know their times tables to 12 and multiplying accurately a three-digit number and a two-digit number together with a one-digit number. This is the way I would set it out and do it. So six times seven, five times seven and four times seven and solve it this way. So being able to do that now in year four. Um, number, so fractions, quite a lot to, to, to go into here with fractions. So first of all, um, they'll need to know the term non-unit and unit fraction. Basically, it's not as tricky as it sounds. A non-unit fraction is anything, a fraction that has a numerator larger than one. So two quarters, two thirds, three quarters, 
you can see this numerator is more than one. So that's a non-unit fraction. If it was one quarter, where the numerator was one, that would be a unit fraction. So this idea that understanding those terms, um, being able to know, okay, what a quarter, a half and three quarters are as decimals. Okay, so in year three, they were introduced to decimals for the first time. And now in year four, they get to experiment with them a bit more. So a half is 0 0.5 as a decimal. A quarter is 0 0.25 and three quarters is 0 0.75. The same as if we were looking at it as percentages, a half would be 50%, a quarter 25%, three quarters would be 75%, but they just need to know this now in year four. Um, adding fractions with the same denominator, which is the same as in year three, that's fairly easy. Um, and also we've got this idea of dividing a one and two digit number by 10 and 100. Now this is really important, and I'm gonna go on into this in a separate page. But the final thing on here is rounding, not just rounding whole numbers, but also rounding decimals using that same rhyme, however. So really important year four that they get to grips with this. So here you can see we've got, um, I like to use this place value chart to explain this to children. This idea of dividing by 10 and 100, not a thousand at this point, but it's good to introduce it anyway. So here we've got the whole numbers, one, tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands. Now, this idea that there are numbers below the decimal point, so we've got tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. And if you're dividing by 10, then you move the numbers one jump to the right, one jump, one space. If you're dividing by 100, you're going to make the numbers jump two spaces to the right. A thousand is three spaces, and the same with multiplying. If you multi num multiply a number by 10, you're doing one jump forwards to the left. Multiplying by 100 is two jumps forward to the left. Multiplying by 1,000 is three jumps to the left. So take the number 24. Apologies for that. It's not so clear. If I were to divide this number by 10, then I'm looking to make the numbers move one jump to the right because they're getting smaller. So the 4 would jump into the tenths, and that will become 4 tenths. And the 2 would jump into the 1s. So 24 divided by 10, therefore, would be 2.4. If you were dividing by 100, it would have made two jumps back, and it would be 0 0.24. So they really have to get their head around this idea of dividing by 10 and 100. Please use this place value chart because it is really handy. You can get it online, and it's one way of really getting the kids to understand this. And I would still use this right up until year six. Measurement, so we're moving on to measure, and this isn't such a big thing um, in regards to the number. It's the number, place, value, addition, subtraction, the most important, but here are other things that they'll need to know. Perimeter of rectilinear shapes, so working out the perimeter of a shape, which they looked at in year three, but also we get this idea of area coming in, but by counting the squares. So if I just show you here quickly, this might be an example if you are working out the area of this shape, you just count how many squares. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that would be six. And the right to write it, you would write centimeters and then you would put squared. Okay, which is a little two that goes there. And the perimeter will be counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, counting around the outside of the shape. OK, and that would just be 13 centimetres. So area and perimeter comes in here. And then this idea of converting between 12 hour and 24 hour clock. So it could be what is 9 p.m. in 24 hour. It would be 2100. Finally, geometry. And the big thing here is in year three, they were introduced to right angles. Now they have these new terms, acute and obtuse. So an angle that is less than a right angle, less than 90, is called acute. Oh, is the angle. It's very cute, very small. And any angle that's bigger than 90, but not as not 180, which will be a straight line, we call obtuse. So these are two new terms they get introduced to in year four. So being able to identify what obtuse and acute angles are. Right angles again. Um, reflex doesn't come in at this point but it just means any angle bigger than 180. And this idea of identifying lines of symmetry comes into year four as well. 
And then very, very lastly, um, we've got position and direction. Um, 2D shapes and 3D shapes, obviously that's still coming over from year three, but then they get introduced first to this idea of coordinates um, and being able to use coordinates and then also translation, translate a shape on a coordinates grid. So coordinates, we use this rhyme along the corridor up the stairs. So if I was plotting the coordinate five, four, the five tells me to go along the corridor first, one, two, three, four, five. And then the four, the second number tells me to go up the stairs, which brings me to point B. Now, if I'm translating a shape, I need to know how far the shape has traveled. So from this place to this place, I've gone one, two, three to the right, and I've gone one, um, now I've gone four to the right and one, two up, because I have to go from the same point. So point C, has to be point C over here. So it's gone one, two, three, four to the right, and it's gone two up. And that's how this shape has been translated, four to the right and two up. So being able to describe that translation also comes in to year four. Finally, statistics, um, it's them looking at bar charts, being able to say, you know, what's the most popular, what's the least popular, reading the bar chart and answering questions on bar charts and pictograms. Right, that's everything. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that you found that useful. I try to go into more detail in the more, more important things that come up in year four. Um, but yeah, if you found the video useful, please put a like, share the video with friends and other parents or teachers who may be working with children in year four. Um, and as like I said at the beginning, you know, I have lots of people watching these videos, but not subscribed. I'm trying to help grow the channel. So please subscribe for more videos on primary education. I'll continue to consistently update the channel with videos and, you know, request a video you would like in the comments and I'll happily make it for you. So thanks, guys. Um, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. See you later.